Okay, welcome back, ENG 460. This is, um, I think it's uh, video number eight. And last time we looked at the ASCII preprocessor directive. Well, this time we're going to look at another one. And the one that we're going to look at is the um, ASCII Z. So last time we did ASCII without the Z. Now we're going to do ASCII with the Z here. And if you look at this program, I pretty much have the same thing. You know, I got my comments up here. And then we have our data segment, which is right here. And we've got some stuff in the data segment. I've got my text segment, which is right here. And um, I use the global preprocessor directive to give my main program a label. And then I have my usual um, normal termination stuff down here. But I don't have any body. I don't have any code in here. This is all a data segment example. Now, what's changed in the data segment is instead of the ASCII preprocessor directive, I put a Z there, and that Z has an effect. It does something. And what it does is it null terminates the string. Okay, So this Z basically null terminates the string. And by null termination, I mean it puts a 0 in memory. So you're going to see the ASCII code for a 1, which is hex 3.1 hex 3.2, hex 3.3, 3, and then it's going to be terminated by the ASCII character hex 00. zero. All right? So let's, um, let's reinitialize the simulator and load this guy. I can say reinitialize and load file. I want ASCII Z. If I go to my text segment, you'll see the only thing in here is the termination. Okay, let's bring the file back up here. Yeah, so the only thing you see there is the termination, which is down here. But the important stuff is the data segment. So in QT SPIM, we need to go over to the data tab. It's not in the kernel data segment. That's data for the kernel. We're not messing with the stack. No, so it's not there. I can actually turn those off. Remember how to do that? Data segment, turn off kernel data, turn off stack data. And the only thing I see is my user data. All right, well, let's see. Let's bring that program up here. And what did we do? We created a label called A1. And we said, make that equal to the ASCII string 1, 2, 3, but null terminated. All right, so it's going to go to its first location that we can declare data in, which is going to be 1001 quad 0. Well, that's going to correspond to these 8 bits right here, and that's hex 31. Well, hex 31 is the ASCII representation of 1. The next location is this guy right here, which is 1001001. .001. And that's hex 32, which is uh, the ASCII representation of 2. And then you have hex 33 right here at location. Right, this is location, what, 1001002. Well, hex 33 corresponds to 3. But because I use the Z on the ASCII, it's going to stick an extra character and that's going to be basically from C, it's the same thing as backslash zero, or it's the uh, ASCII zero, zero, or the null character. And that's exactly what you see right there. Okay. Now, the next string I declare is a five. And then here's a five. Let's actually change that to a four so we could change it up again. Let's save that. And what we'll do is we'll uh, reinitialize load file. Okay, so yeah, so now there I've got my one, two, three. There's my one, two, three, null character. The next thing I declare is a five, but because I have a Z, there's going to be a null character at the end of that. So there's my ASCII representation of my five. There's my null character. Then the next thing I have is four, but the Z says append a null character. And there is my ASCII representation of a four, and there's my null character. The next memory location is a four, four, and what's that equal to? Well, that's the ASCII representation of a D. Okay, so there, let's see, you've got um, dr period space w a l s h, and then I have a null character, and that's exactly what we had, dr period Walsh null character. Now, this point right here, 45, 45, 45, is the ASCII representation of a capital E. All right, so you've got 45, 45, and then the next one would be N, okay, 4E, and then G, 4, 7, and then a space, 2, 0, and then 4 for 460. All right, so you've got 4. There's hex 3, 4. Then you've got a 6, which is 3, 6. 
then you've got a zero, which is three zero. And then because you use the Z directive, you get a null termination right here on that three zero. And then the rest of memory is blank. Now over here, you see what you get is the ASCII representation. And there we go, one, two, three, null character, five, null character, four, null character, doctor, period, Walsh, null character, ENG, space, 460, null character. Notice um, on, when you see that the dots basically mean it's not a printable. But here, you can't distinguish between non-printable ASCII characters and the period. It looks the same. Because this guy right here is a period, but all um, these other guys are null characters. And the space actually shows up as a space. All right. So that's the other preprocessor directive. Now we know uh, ASCII and uh, ASCII Z. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and stop right here because that's a good logical break, and um, we'll see you next time.